Hey, director, this is entirely from speeds and feeds and back to enabling, um, you know, solutions. I want to talk about DICE. Um, DICE is a single pane of glass inside Now Micro. We're providing up to date and extensive information on what you purchase from us. We're giving you real time data on devices when they enter Now Micro production. We have an easy to use interface, you can export, so on and so forth. And we have API and device information via, via uh, REST and SOAP uh, interfaces. So I'm actually going to do a DICE demo here. So we're going live. So if we look at DICE, um, this is my Acme Corporation dashboard. We have a couple uh, additions that are newer here. The first is our device warranty look. So for Dell, HP, Lenovo, and um, our Intel, our, our now micro OEM branded products, which are typically Intel NUC based, we now have a device warranty um, roadmap here where we can actually say on warranty when you're expired or unknown. So unknown would be sort of devices that we don't have a manufacturer feed to or we did not de uh, develop or produce ourselves. The idea here is that you get more information about what your fleet looks like, what your rotation might be. Um, you'd also see the latest devices that were going, gone through production. So as they were produced, maybe not shipped to you, you'd see that as well also with completed orders and open orders. Um, if I look at device table here, so give that a second to load, we see the last devices produced by now Micro 4 Acme Corporation, the mostly Dell Optiplexes. We can expand this view. Um, in our production facility, we have uh, called semi-automated, but essentially we're collecting somewhere near 100 data points on every system that comes through prior to imaging it. This information goes all the way down to things like firmware revision and bias version, even the serial numbers of DIMMs if it's available. We use this information in a few different ways. I mean, one, we want to provide it to you. Um, if you have questions around, you know, how many Toshiba drives you have in your environment, you'd be able to answer those questions yourself. We also see a use case um, that doesn't come up very often, but is impactful in the case of like um, needing to do firmware updates for like recall purposes or um, advisories from manufacturers. So for example, if we got an advisory from a manufacturer that a particular firmware revision, revision of a drive needed to be updated, we'd actually have some actual information to communicate back to you of, you know, we ship these 100 devices or these five devices with this firmware. Here's the update procedure that needs to be done. You know, use your RMM tool or let us help you, you know, script that out so that you can get those updated and sort of avert the threat in the field. Um, we're giving you other actionable information like the serial number and asset tag that's in the bias as we put in the bias, the image that was uh, on it, the warranty SKU, um, even going down to motherboard information as well. Um, bias version, very interesting for people. And then MAC address. We also combine that with the information from our ordering system. So you'll see your PO number. It's an order. It hasn't been fulfilled. We can see where it was shipped to. If the device had been serviced, we'd see, you know, some some war, uh, RMA numbers here, hopefully just one, if at any at all. And then if there was tracking via UPS or FedEx, this would be a clickable link to go right to the website and be able to load that. You can also create a ticket here. So if I create a ticket, it's going to fill out as much information as it has. It's going to have me enter my first name and last name and description of my problem. I click submit. Now I have a ticket. It's the easiest way of getting a single device warranty uh, ticket into us. Um, obviously, we still accept those over phone and, and email, but if you want to self-service, this is a really easy way of getting all that information in one spot. Um, for the purchasers or people that are interested more in an order-oriented view, we have the same information just from order instead of device. So from the device, I can you know sort of spider into the order. From the order, I can spider into the devices. So if I look at this invoice, this is an invoiced order um, from last year, it looks like, and I can see all the devices that were on that order, right? That's great. I can also do things like change the order of these columns. I can go to the column chooser and I could, you know, show the baseboard manufacturer instead, you know, add that here. I can remove columns. And then I can export this view exactly how I want to see it. So I could expect all, all the data from this order right here or any of these table views really, 
or I can export just selected rows if I use the uh, select interface here. These same things are available here for all the order information. So if you wanted to just export raw order information, you'd be able to do that as well. It's going to give me a little Excel spreadsheet here that I could open, but I'm not going to. And now I have all the information. This is really about you being able to answer your questions and self-service as necessary. Um, anything that's involving order information or device information. Obviously, our inside sales team is always there for you to you know, be able to answer more complex questions or whatnot. But we find over time, based on customer requests, that they just kind of want to answer their own questions. We give you an interface to do that. Um, the other primary usage of, of DICE, this sort of basic device information, is to get that either in your asset management system or use it as your asset management system. So um, I'm gonna show you a couple more things and then we're gonna talk more about that stuff. Um, you can also see a list of your support tickets here. Uh, I'm signed in as me, so we can open up and see our ticket information. In fact, this is my old laptop and I was having a problem with the audio. This serial number will populate in a second. It was closed. It turns out it was a software problem because I'm terrible or something. But um, you need information about all your tickets here. Again, sortable, exportable. You can still create a ticket here, fill out information. So that's DICE. I'm going to go back into Mr. Presentation here and then talk about DICE Plus. So DICE Plus is a new set of features. It's a new tier of DICE um, that has a couple an expansion of sort of the usage. We currently have customers using DICE as it sits today as their asset management system. It's, you know, they buy devices from us, they just wanna know what they bought when the warranties expire, serial numbers, MAC addresses, they're done. What we found is there's a need for a little bit more. Um, our two focuses here are DICE Live, which is real-time actionable information on devices. Things like what's currently in the device, you know, did we put more RAM in it, remove RAM, what graphics adapters in there, um, what version of the graphics driver is there? What drivers are installed? What software is installed? What versions? And then usage information. Is this thing actually on? Has it checked in recently? Have I seen the thing? And then expanded asset management focused features. So we're looking at, um, you know, more warranty information, which I already showed you, and then importing other asset records. So maybe there's some non-micro -non devices you want to import. Maybe you want to get your displays in there or uh, other fixed assets. Maybe you want to put your car in there. I don't know. I'm not going to judge. Uh, and then editable fields. Um, we are releasing Dice Plus in uh, a few days on April 1st, um, April Fool's Day, I guess. And I'm going to give you a short demo in our staging environment here. So I'm just going to minimize this window, drag over a Firefox window. And I'm going to make that bigger so you guys don't need your reader glasses on. And we're looking good. So the, the main addition here with the Dice Plus here is Dice Live. It's a new tab in our device information. This information is being fed by a small lightweight agent that can be configured to check in at any basic interval. Um, our typical suggestion would be once a day. So what's interesting about this is I can see when this device is last sort of been able to contact me, which means now I know if that device is on, um, if somebody's actually using it, that could be actionable for like rotation, for example. I need a list of all the machines that are have a warranty that's expiring in the next year, but have been online and active in the last 30 days. Because I don't want to replace systems that nobody are, as, that aren't on or not active. Or I want to be able to see, hey, these devices have been active in 30 days. Let's go chase them down. Somebody didn't report that this sign's down somewhere or this system over here running a kiosk is turned off for some reason. So we have this agent. We're reporting back some information on a periodic basis and we're displaying it to you and combining it with this other information that you're used to around uh, devices. So we have drive utilization, memory utilization, CPU utilization. I think uh, the more interesting one for us would be the actual graphics adapters in the system. So in this case, it's a laptop with Intel integrated graphics and an RTX 2070. I can see the driver version and release date. So, hey, turns out we need to update this one because, you know, we've seen a bug with this version. 
now we have an actual plan to make. We can see the display resolution that this is the currently running display when it was attached. Um, which since the laptop is kind of how this works, but we can see the display resolution and refresh rate of that device. You know, we get the plug and play device ID to all that fun stuff. We can see the memory, um, how many DIMMs, manufacturer serial number. So if a system was changed over time, we'd be able to say, hey, you know, we upgraded these systems to 8 gigs of RAM. Let's go find the ones that we didn't and get those upgraded so that we can make these last another year. Now I have another piece of actionable information to solve my problems. Um, graphics adapters, um, we have higher fidelity graphics adapter information. So we can see this is a Intel Wi-Fi 6. You know, we actually have the IP address, you know, that's bound to it. Um, we also are planning to have the public IP bound here um, so that you could do some geolocation stuff or know if it's inside your premise or not. Um, so we got a couple more days to implement things here. Um, operating system information. So this is running Windows 10 Enterprise. We can see the version. It's 1909. We can see when it was installed. Um, this again goes back to the if you're on support scenarios, I want to know. I want to be able to answer when somebody calls, maybe, you know, hey, what are you running? Is this the current version that we're actually supporting? Is this 1607 and it's a client system? Hey, we need to get that upgraded. Um, being able to sort of answer your own questions about a system without have, interrogating the user to like go, you know, pick and check and choose through things is important. I think the other important thing here is you may already have a management system like ConfigMan or an RM system where I think a lot of the stuff ends up failing or maybe not serving all of its purpose is they have all this information, but combining it is hard. So giving you sort of a single pane of glass into a device that you can see, hey, here's when I order it, here's when the warranty's done, here's what it looks like right now, you know, here's the processor, here's the software that's installed. I have a searchable list of, uh, I can look for Visual Studio stuff and see what versions are on here. Having that all in one place is a powerful paradigm for actually solving problems when somebody's calling you or when you're trying to quickly work through a project or quickly work through an emergency. Um, we're also, so this is the applications view and we're also doing the same thing for drivers. Um, oops. We are going to be filtering out most of the inbox drivers, but in this case, we should be able to see in NVIDIA, if I can spell correctly, which I can't. Okay, so then we can see the, the NVIDIA driver here that we can see in the other pane. So we can sort of answer those questions about what drivers are actually are installed here. Going down to storage, um, the same disk information that we typically see, but now it's live. Um, We'll get the disk utilization isn't showing up on this one for some reason. And then the normal system information, which doesn't normally change. In the case of laptops, we are showing additional battery information. So if the battery is reporting uh, a failed state to Windows, we'll see that. And then if it has a Dell HP Lenovo battery, we'd actually see the battery model number here. So you can maybe, for example, the battery status is bad. What battery is it? I can order it, get that part in right away, or even make a ticket with no micro to have it replaced. Um, Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. So that's Dice Plus. We're really excited about it. Um, definitely want to talk more about anybody that's interested in it. Um, and, you know, we build this stuff based on customer feedback and customer needs. So if there's something here that you're like, oh man, if it had this one more feature, this would be the greatest thing in the universe. I'd love to talk about that because I love building things that makes people happy and makes their focus on what they need to get done happen and possible. Um, now micro typically focuses on that device experience, you know, delivering the device ready to rock, delivering whatever it is we're delivering to you technology wise, ready to go, automated, secure, reliable. We want you to be able to focus on your mission because I almost bet 100% of the time your mission isn't delivering devices. It's about delivering that another complete solution that's built on top of one of our device or delivering you know educational materials delivering visual content de delivering communication you're about that and we're about this so going back to mr slide deck here i found this fancy iceberg slide and i had to use it I, i'm calling this the asset management journey right so you know at the top the tip of the ice iceberg you might have information in disparate systems right we have all this information, might take a long time to combine it, but it might exist. 
But the basic sort of shallow level of this is I want some easy warranty information for active assets. What's active? How do I combine that with my warranty information to get a rotation report for next year? Hey, it looks like I have a lot of Windows laptops that come out of warranty next year. Let's get a list. I know what models they are now and find the, you know, have now micro system with getting the new models set up. So I know exactly what I need to buy from here and not spend, you know, weeks trying to report that information out. In-depth hardware information is kind of sitting below that. I want to pull deep hardware stats to prioritize hardware rotation based on OS support, speed, and capacity, right? I want to be able to say, I want to rotate all the systems I have with four gigs of RAM. Four gigs of RAM is just not good enough for a Windows system now. I want eight gigs of RAM on that client compute device. Um, deeper than that, usage information. Which assets are actually like, what, what are, what's actually on and being used? If I'm, if I'm providing a thousand desktops to my users, in three years, do I need to replace a thousand desktops? Do I need to replace a thousand one hundred because we grew? Do I need to replace you know eight hundred because a lot of these users end up getting laptops? When you're making rotation decisions around IT assets, it's important to know what's actually being used so you don't overbuy. The point is not to give you another desktop that you put in the corner and never turn on because you have a laptop and you bring that home at night. It's really about buying the right equipment and the right form factors that's going to be used so that you are a good steward of your um, you know, IT assets in general. And then, you know, going even deeper, you know, that sort of reporting journey of correlating warranty usage and hardware information to make rotation decisions. I know I've talked about it like six times, but I think it's one of the most powerful ideas here around Dice Plus is how do I make this whole process of knowing that I need to rotate assets on some kind of periodic basis, whether it be because of performance or OS support, speed, you know, whatever warranty, whatever it is, I need to make that process as smooth as possible and spend the least amount of time on that because I got other things I got to do. Like we're setting up remote access for 10,000 people or, um, you know, figuring out a disaster recovery plan when I can't go to the office. Like these, we got to get this other work out of the way so that we can get to what's important. So I have some dice slides in here. It turned out my dice demos are working, so we're all good there. Um, Want to talk a little bit about remote solutions. Um, we typically are building what we call focus building blocks, right? So we have um, we have a number of solutions built around sort of the idea of giving you things that let you automate processes, right? Whether it be DICE, DICE Plus, we've been talking about Configurator, which can help with field customization and deployment, and a lot of people use as an out-of-box experience for Windows 10. Um, image Sync, where we can actually give you a remote, you know, branch office imaging scenario that may not be possible otherwise. And then uh, Intel vPro, which is the next thing I'm going to really talk about here. So Intel vPro. Um, Intel vPro is a technology that is included on, you know, I have a whole, you know, hour long demo slide deck demonstration of vPro, but essentially, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a feature that's in some Intel processor based devices i5 and above, there's some scenarios where i3s can happen with desktop systems, but essentially you may already be buying vPro enabled systems. If you're not, it might be something worth looking into because it enables these really interesting remote support scenarios. So when all my users are inside my building, everything's typically pretty good, right? Like if I have config man and I don't have and they're not on V, you know, I don't need VPN, you know, like we can do stuff, we can contact things. Maybe my RMM solution works fine if I have something else like Intune or whatnot. When they're outside of the office, some of this stuff gets a little fuzzy, right? Um, you know, obviously there's the hybrid um, Intune config man scenario, which is one way to solve this. There's things like always on VPN and direct access that can help you be able to manage those systems remotely. But what happens if like you're always on VPN or remote desk, uh, direct access is the problem? What do you what are you gonna do now? How do I how do I support this user? So vPro really does let you have remote secure access to these devices from a harder level remotely without physical access. So we can do things like hard reset, power on, 
um, reboot to Pixie, even do some reimages over the internet. If you were really, really bored and had a lot of time, you could reimage a Windows system this way. Um, I think most important would be the remote triage sort of first call resolution type scenarios where somebody's remote, maybe they're traveling, maybe they're just at working at home because that's what we do now. How do I get enough information about their system to help them? And then in the case of, uh, you know, sort of digital signage, communi remote e communication type stuff, how do I reduce truck rolls, right? How do I fix stuff without having somebody roll out and spend the 250 to $500 that that's probably going to cost me? So I have a demo for that. I'm going to figure out where the demo went. Here's the demo. Okay. So I'm using one of our tools to sort of do this, but uh, what's interesting is this system, I'm connected over a software agent here. It's actually sitting next to me. Um, usually I do this demo from the office and the system's at my house. Today I'm broadcasting from my basement, so the system's next to me. But the server I'm actually communicating with is actually in, um, this is a Azure hosted VM, I think in Ohio. So this is over the internet. I'm using a software agent. I can see my system. I have a funny meme on the desktop, which is funnier if I was in the office downloading cat memes, but you know, you'll forgive me. Um, I'm also able to connect via the hardware here. So when I click that hardware connect here, I can see Intel AMT connected. It drew a little bit slower. This is actually literally what's coming off the back of the HDMI port on the, the back of this Intel Nook device. So th this system could be blue screened. This system could be at a bias screen. It could be anywhere. And I would be able to see exactly what's coming off the back of the port here. This is a really powerful way of troubleshooting OS level problems at the hardware level. Um, if you're looking at the back end here, I can connect. This is actually a small little web server essentially connected that I'm connected to in the back of the system. And I can see that the system's powered on. I could even, as long as it's plugged in, I could actually power it up even. I could wake up the OS. I could you know, make the OS go to standby. I could reboot to Pixie, reboot to Power BIOS. I'm going to reset to BIOS in this case. I'm going to click OK. It's doing that. Hey, guess what? We can go over here and do hardware connect. Looking at my screen here, it's still actually rebooting, so it's going to take a second here. Oh, here's my BIOS logo. Don't normally see that with a remote management tool. And then now I'm inside the BIOS of the system. I can actually change, you know, hey, it turns out the user says this, their fans are too loud. I could change the fans to be quieter. I have some options here. Actually, it's, there we go. My mouse is slightly off, I think, which is causing me a little bit of a problem. But going back over here, we can see things like, we can see, you know, remote desktop primary display. We can see user consent settings, power policy, so on and so forth. We can also see hardware information. So if I wanted to know, hey, the user is saying the system isn't bootable, I could go here and see, you know, hey, this SSD is gone. I'm guessing it's a bad SSD. We actually need to repair this versus saying, oh, it's just a bias message that said it hit any key to continue, but they don't know how to read hit any key to continue. So maybe I'll just hit any key to continue for them. Now I solved my problem without having to roll attack or you know do anything here. Same kind of information you typically see in our dice system, right? So we can see the processor, bias version, baseboard, the memory modules, so on and so forth. We can see our network settings, you know, how it's connected. If it was connected via wireless, we'd also see that. We could maybe help a little bit with some of those problems remotely and a number of other you know crazy fun things in here um, and also we have a remote desktop interface we could then connect to here click on something yeah my mouse is just slightly off unfortunately there but so that's intel v pro i the overall idea here is we wanted to show how this technology can be used to remote triage and help customers or you know end users with their devices, whether they be a client computing device or a digital signage type system, embedded system. There actually are a lot of options we will support them. This is actually connected you know, to that VM in Azure over a Sierra connection. So anywhere this machine is, as long as there's an internet connection, it's going to connect back. I'm able to see and connect to it and, and remotely manage it. So Intel V Pro, talk about solution blocks. So we're right on time for the thank you. 
Um, thank you for listening to me for about 50 minutes here. I'm going to take a look at the questions here and see what we have. Um, so the first question was, how is the check-in period frequency determined on the endpoint to DICE Plus? Is it a one-time setup or can it be easily changed after deployment? Um, it's actually changeable after the deployment. We're actually pulling it from the portal as part of, we're, we're pulling it from DICE as a configurable option. So by default, it's 24 hours. Um, our dev systems are set up, I think every five minutes or two minutes, just so that we can really quickly iterate through the software. So that is a configurable option. Thank you for the question. Um, do we have any more questions on the webinar? I'm gonna give that maybe one-ish more minute. Um, well, I, you know, thank you for coming. If you have any questions or want to know more about our solutions, definitely visit nowmicro.com and nowmicroplayers.com. You can follow me on Twitter at Spring Failings. I'm guessing we're going to be doing more and more of these kind of webinar type activities. So take a look out for an upcoming schedule of uh, a variety of topics under our um, Tech Connect banner. Um, we'll be resuming those pretty soon, just all remote. Um, and definitely want to hear more about your problems and your needs. So thank you. No more questions. So you have 10 minutes of your time back and have a great afternoon.